I'm Andrew Santino. I'm at the Los Angeles Kings training facility at California Referee School, learning what it takes to become a pro NHL referee. This is Behind the Lights. All right, I'm here with my main man, Michelle, who runs the camp. My man, this is my dude. Tell me how, how all this began. I started refereeing and uh, I loved it. We moved to Los Angeles and I started refereeing here and I said, well, we need a referee school. So yep. that was my career here and that kept going. It's been our 24th year this year and uh, we achieve a lot. What are, what are some of the things that I'm gonna be doing? First of all, you're gonna learn how to be a good skater. <laughs> okay. You're gonna teach power skating, communication with coaches, players, learn your rules. Four blue showers. And then, and then a lot of fitness and endurance, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Learning these techniques here is ultimately, you know, what's gonna what's gonna help these referees get to the professional NHL level. Exactly. So it's a process like the player. You do a, a youth hockey, you get uh, hired by the junior level, and at the school we have the scouts from uh, the junior level North American League. We have uh, Western Hockey League, the junior and the NHL. What separates an NHL, a pro referee, from uh, the juniors or something below? Better vision? Is it better statistical calls? Is well, it's probably the whole package, right? You know, yeah. you're learning to skate today. Yeah. You know, you're learning Fairly. to call penalties. Yeah. You have to learn the rules. You have to learn how to deal with the game personnel. You have to gain acceptability within the game. Right. And then you have to do that, all those things and more, at each level that you progress through. It's like right. a pyramid. So as you move up. At the NHL level, it's almost easier because we're dealing with the best players in the world and the best right. coaches, and they're all very professional. So you played hockey your whole life, and you knew at a very young age you wanted to be a referee, and, and your goals or your aspirations are hopefully to get to the NHL level, right? Always wanted to be a referee since I was about 10. Yeah. Passed my level one exam last year, I passed my level two, and today I'm hoping to pass my level three. I've been watching, you're doing a really good job, man. Thank you. It's not easy out there. Is there ever referees that are real showmen? You know how Absolutely. certain you know how certain baseball referees will just Absolutely. you know they also make more of a movement sure. in baseball. So certain referees in the NHL have a little bit more flair on stuff. Is that Absolutely. What they do? At right. the NHL level, especially, and we encourage the kids out here to have a little personality. Some people right. are more outgoing than others, but we always want to sell your call as a referee. All right. So when you're calling a penalty, you got a delayed penalty, so you want your arm up, get your bicep right against your ear. Six blue, hooking. Six blue, hooking. Good. When you and do you your penalties, we do everything slow. And your signals, you want to have them, your arms away from your body and below your face. Because you still need to be able to see what else is going on. There could right. be retaliation, right? Right on. Seven green, interference. Good. They don't ever fly away like that, do no, they? No, no. If you look shaky, now they'll question know. you the rest of the game. Right. You got to look like a man when you go do it. Yep. Four blue, hooking, cross-checking, high <laughs> sticking. <laughs> and then you're out. Puck drops are so fast when refs do. Refs come up, I mean, right away, they're ready, ready. I mean, and it's it's down and they're gone. Yeah. I mean, it's such a quick thing. Well, for a real face-off, you have to be a little closer. Bend your knees, bend your elbow, bend your wrist. And then you just, everything goes spin. down. Bit of a spin, so it lands flat. And then, out of there. Think safety first. Perfect. And then get out. I'm ready. You see that right in the Look center. Look where it landed. Perfect. Look where it landed. They in couldn't the heart. say it's not a fair face off. That's right in the heart of it all. Yeah. So let's say these two guys, they've dropped their gloves and sticks. And they've engaged. And they're fighting. So on the way to the fight, you take your whistle off and put it in your pocket. So now we'll assume they've finished punching one another. We want to enter at the same time. We don't want to enter at different times. And I grab my guy, so we would just come over the top and we would both hold him and lean in and just talk to them at the same time. Right. You know? Please just let the, hey, good fight. Way to go. Yeah, hey, good, good fight. fight. You knocked That's him. It. You did good a good job. hit. You got a good hit. You got a and good hit. And then you stay between them on the way to the penalty box. But sometimes what might happen is one player, so let's say you two guys have, you've jumped him and he jumps him and the black guy's not ready and he goes down and the guy's feeding him a hot lunch and you have to intervene. So get around on the side and get in there and you communicate with Come him. Come on, buddy, you got him, you won. He lost again, that's the third time you beat him today. Come on, that's enough. The basic idea is that you want to be so comfortable out there on the ice, so fluid in your movement, you don't have to think about what you're doing. 
Why do they need to know these specific turns and cuts? And well, everything we did today, we were breaking down strides into a more simple form. Right. It's more understandable. So when we're doing C cuts, you're learning to generate speed for the forward stride. When you're going backwards, we're doing C cuts, but with toe, toe pressure to learn to generate that power going backwards. One of the reasons why we put people's hands behind their back is because it takes away all this movement Swinging, like this. Because right. as you know, when you start skating, if you start swinging too much, you start leaning forward, forward. and you talk about ruining your beautiful hockey <laughs> teeth. <laughs> All right, I need to get back in the Absolutely. ice. Good Thank luck. you. There you go. Watch my feet. Watch my feet. Do what my feet do. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to referee. What? Let us do it. All right, brother. So, I'm a guest puck drop, man, all right? You guys ready? Crush. You see that? You see that puck drop? See that hot puck drop? Almost got killed. Almost got killed. We'll call it. We'll call it for today. Good job, man. Good <laughs> job. Good job. Almost got murdered, but we'll take it. We'll take an almost murder. All right, that's going to do it. I want to thank Michelle at the California Referee School, as well as all the campers for putting up with me. I'm Andrew Santino. This is Behind the Lights. Let's go!